So now we're going to go ahead and solve a problem from scratch. Question 7. Listed below are the number of students in my online class who took the final exam for the semester listed and the number of those students who received an A in the class. We're asked to find the linear coefficient linear correlation coefficient r and we're going to be rounding our answer to three decimal places as needed. So all I'm given is my set of data and I'm going to need to find r from scratch and then do note for such a small sample size, only three semesters worth of data, we need extremely low or extremely high r coefficient to get a strong linear correlation. But on to making my table so I can fill in my r formula. First I identify x the number of students who took the final exam, and I'm going to make an X column by taking the 19, 23, and 19 and writing them vertically, and at this point I'm going to head total those three numbers to get 61. Identify my Y column of the students who took the final, which of those received an A in the class. I'm going to then create a Y final, a Y column, going down vertically and total the 5, 4, and 6 to get 15. Next, I need to find my XY column, which remember is to multiply straight across. So I'll go ahead and multiply the first numbers, 19 times 5 to get 95, 23 times 4 to get 92, and 19 times 6 to get 114, and next, I'm going to total the three vertical numbers, the 95, 92, and 114, to get 301. Notice, don't total straight across. 61 plus 15 is actually 76. It is not the same as totaling the column. So although we work across for everything except for the totals column. Now I need to find my x squared data. So I take 19 squared to get 361, 23 squared to get 529, and well 19 squared but we already did it so we actually know that we're going to get 361 again. Total that column 1,251. My last column is y squared Hopefully you can do this one without a calculator. 5 squared is 25, 4 squared is 16, and 6 squared is 36. Again, adding up the three vertical numbers, I get 77. Notice 15 squared is not 77. I think it's 225. I'm ready to find R. The first piece of R is N, the sample size. We have one, two, three semesters of data, so n equals three. Now we multiply with the sum of x times y, so we multiply with 301. Then we subtract the sum of x, which is 61, and multiply with the sum of y, which is 15. And if you don't know where I'm getting this from, you can look at your formula. In the denominator, our first square root starts off with n, it's still 3. We multiply with the sum of x's squared. So remember, I have an x squared column, and I'm taking the sum of that column. So I'm taking the 1,251 number. Then I subtract, and I take the sum of x column, which is the 61, but I have to square that. Now we multiply with the second square root, which again starts off with n, we've list listed a few times. Now we take the sum of y's totaled. So not the orange y column, but the sum of y's in red that have been totaled. So 77, we subtract the sum of y squared, so the 15 squared. And now remember, I'm gonna start cleaning stuff up. So for the numerator, I just typed in 3 times 301 minus 61 times 15 and got negative 12. In the denominator, I'm going to go ahead and leave the first square root, but calculate the interior. 3 times 1,251 minus 61 squared should give you 32. 
If that's not what's happening, your calculator has a different operations of um, order of operations it's working from, and you'll probably want to do 3 times 1,251 and write it down, 61 squared and write it down, and then subtract those sums or those two values so that you get 32. And now I need to calculate the interior of the next square root. So 3 times 77 minus 15 squared gave me 6. Using the rules of exponents, I'm allowed to multiply the interiors of the square roots. So I've got my negative 12 on top, and now it's the square root of 192. And this is what I'll type into my calculator. So negative 12 divided by the square root of 192, negative 0 0.8660, etc. I'm ready to find my r coefficient, but don't forget I do need to go three places after the decimal. So with rounding, I'm going to have a solution of negative 0.866, which although does feel pretty close to negative 1, with such a small sample size, it's technically not close enough to find a strong linear correlation. So the number of students that take the final exam has nothing to do with the number of students who receive an A in my online class. So is that good or bad for you?